So maybe this will be one of a series of talks, we don't know, but at least this one is in terms of AI and warfare. And I think no one can have any doubt that we are in a new period when it comes to um, methods of war. For decades, uh, nuclear was the ultimate. Now, a lot of people are talking about artificial intelligence. And um, in its extreme form, its combatants have the ability to destroy each other, a fully autonomous, i.e. Um, without human intervention. And a number of countries are fighting to be ahead in this, US, China, obviously, but also smaller players, Russia, Israel, Turkey, surprisingly, and lots of other countries. I'm gonna start by talking about what I would call soft AI wars. These are not the fully, fully automated ones. And uh, from what we are witnessing so far, they are ideal for what I would call long fuzzy wars, i.e. Um, continuation of cold wars, um, or um, punishing a country for not being the um, not following the correct line and so on. Um, and in some ways they present us with new scenarios because um, they can still uh, inflict a lot of damage, but um, the uh, perpetrator can deny that they were involved or, uh, at least can't, doesn't have to take responsibility for the number of civilian deaths or deaths in total. There's a lot of fuzziness in the whole period. However, the, even these soft AI wars, these soft AI wars can be very dangerous because they can intentionally or unintentionally start nuclear conflict. Um, we have seen many aspects of this type of AI warfare in the last decades, well, decade probably. Um, there is the use of cyber, there is disinformation, there is um, uh, methods used uh, by various states in a state of cold war, like Israel, Israel and Iran. A few, a couple of months ago, <laughs> Israel managed <coughs> excuse me, to stop uh, cars getting access to fuel in Iran by hacking to Iran's distribution of internal fuel. And of course, this wasn't as stupid as you might think. So their allies or their advisors had told them that this will lead to riots and this will inevitably lead to the overthrow of the Islamic Republic, none of which was true, but that in, uh, apart from the stupidity of uh, listening to um, their allies, um, the Israelis managed to stop distribution of oil, of oil in another country through the use of cyber warfare. And this has to do with collecting information, sending information, but in all of this, the human is involved. The human decision maker is a crucial. Um, there is another way in which this soft AI can be used, and we are hearing a lot about it in the Ukraine crisis. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware, are aware that international trade is organized by a SWIFT, which is a globalized control of world finance. And we are told that in the same way that US used SWIFT to basically stop any transactions between Iran and the third party, the same will be used against Russia for military action in Ukraine, or as some people have been saying today, for not attacking Ukraine, depending on which way you look at this. Now, the way um, this, is, uh, this type of AI is used, bots or de uh, detect a trade deal millions of miles away, financial transaction between the sanctioned or targeted country. And US then imposes financial penalties on the third party. So you're already into the territory of increasing the effects of your sanctions. Um, of course, 
the main examples that comes to mind when you talk of this medium range or soft AI or drones. And again, we know they've been used in Ukraine. We know that uh, information is gathered, the target is identified, and a drone is dispatched, usually by a human being, uh, to destroy the target. Now, even in these, we do see a lot of errors. I think no one who has seen the relative, I wouldn't exaggerate it, but the relative popularity of the Taliban in the Afghan mountains will deny the fact that drones played an important role in it. Very often the uh, human being er made the error of, for example, confusing a wedding uh, with uh, what was called the meeting of high command Taliban leaders in the mountains of Hindukush, and then the, the drone was sent to uh, blow it up. Uh, and of course, uh, we know how drones have been used in other uh, instances of local con conflict. However, as I keep saying, all of this is a computer is given data, is given information, that information allows a human to make a decision and use an automated weapon, i.e. the um, ultimate, uh, if you like, arbiter of the violence is the human being. When we talk of fully autonomous lethal weapons, we are talking of a different category. And this is the, if you like, this is the part that is really worrying. These weapons, in theory, can select their own target and they will fire independent of a human intervention. Um, they are already in operation. We, I, we don't know if they have killed anyone yet because um, I think even, even if they had, no one would admit to it and um, people wouldn't know necessarily that this was a fully automated device, they might consider it to be still like a drone. However, uh, people who work in this area, who people who are concerned about this, uh, tell us that it is a matter of time before they do um, you know, uh, cause human casualty. The way they are sold is that they are very efficient. No one denies that they are prone to errors, but like um, every other automation, um, they have their own problems. So the problem that if like the strategists are talking about is an obvious one. Wars are not just one battle, one scene of battle. There are a series of conf confrontation and um, at, very often you have to um, imagine or second guess what your enemy will do. Should you retreat? Should you uh, wait for a later, better time to attack? And this is where the whole AI fails. Uh, and I suppose that's a good thing because at least at this stage, this is even the supporters of AI will tell you, well, the algorithm can't predict the various alternatives that it might face. It, it is programmed with various scenarios and instructions on how to react. But at the end of the day, um, there is a limit on how much information you can give it. And given that the target has the human factor, the human factor might decide beyond the box, beyond the computer and the computer will not have the response. I uh, give you a kind of human example of it. So if you go to checkouts these days, they've been, the machine, the automated machine has been given various scenarios, but very often at the end of the day, there is a scenario or there are many scenarios that the machine uh, fails and that's when the human comes and puts the code down. And, um, uh, resolve the issue. One of the uh, people who has warned about artificial intelligence war warfare, Stuart Russell, uh, tells us that um, 
um, they are a real threat, a threat because the killing of humans should never be automated based on algorithmic formulas. And the algorithmic formulas are important because in the, if you like, in the uh, second guessing of the enemy's decision, you might actually make decisions that are worse than your initial um, plan for attack, but also they can have repercussions for the initiator of the attack as opposed to the enemy. Um, and Russell, together with a number of other people, are calling for a, a, a complete um, international uh, condemnation, but also to make all such weapons um, illegal, out, um, illegal globally. They certainly, it is certainly true to say that these weapons are no longer um, part of science fiction. We know that the technology exists. We know that they can be small, cheap, and easily manufactured. In fact, um, um, the limits that these weapons uh, will be facing are not in the planning or not in the, um, if you like, in the fact that you can create swarms of these weapons and send them to attack large numbers. It is that the laws of physics will have some limitations, for example, on the speed that they can take, the range that they can go, and the kind of weight they can carry. So those factors can be, especially the issue of uh, the weight they can carry, or in terms of the weapons they can carry, of course, can be mitigated if you consider the fact that these weapons can be used in millions. You then compensate the fact that they can't carry heavy weapons with agility and the fact that you, um, you're targeting smaller areas, but lots of areas. The question of speed and uh, range is still a problem. Um, although the speed uh, can be resolved, the range is more of an issue in some cases. Um, in many ways, these weapons are considered now by their opponents far more dangerous than nuclear weapons. Why? Because in some ways, non-proliferation, the regulations about um, uh, nuclear weapons, the supposed uh, inspection of nuclear installations, which I know don't, doesn't happen. Israel is a good example of that. You can have nuclear weapons not to be part of non-proliferation and never have any inspections. But nuclear weapons in general um, have some regulations about them. And especially because this whole argument is put forward very much as the hegemon power and its allies putting the, the arguments about AI. So if you listen to the Americans, the only worry is in AI isn't that America will have it or even that China might have it. It's the rogue states. It's the individual terrorist groups that could have it. And of course, um, the, you can't control that. You can't send inspectors to see it. Very often it will be hidden. Very often you might not know about it until it's far too late. And the other difference with nuclear weapons is that the mutual destruction associated with nuclear weapons has always been a deterrent. The fact that we haven't seen a nuclear war in the uh, in decade in the last few decades is partly the deterrent, um, and uh, that in itself doesn't exist in when you look at AI. So, what are the latest developments in this? I. Uh, start with the one that uh, was announced by the United States last week. And uh, they've got a project called Convergence. And uh, the way they propagate, they, their propaganda tells us that this new emerging uh, AI facility shortens the sensor to shooter time in warfare. And uh, it's heralded as a breakthrough, 
it will allow mini drones to network with larger unmanned system. Now, larger unmanned system could be, um, I assume, helicopters, ground weapons, whatever the US considers them to be. And they can destroy targets, according to the US uh, um, advert, they can destroy targets in real time across many domains. Now, they use um, a, an intelligence system uh, called uh, Firestorm. Firestorm is a multi-networked uh, platform which gathers information, analyzes a massive amount of incoming data from the location, from the targets, from enemy um, radars, from enemy defense systems. It then identifies what is relevant, so it has, so it can easily get rid of irrelevant data. It provides the information necessary for the targets and recommends the optimal weapon or the way to attack. And all of this is very speedy, high speed process. Um, according to the US, again, this, is, this gives human life saving data in seconds. Um, there is also the claim here, and again, it is, um, I would say, more of a claim than reality, but there is a claim that uh, with this AI, you are even uh, entering into the uh, your enemy's decision-making cycle in order to be prepared for what their next step will be. Okay. Um, if you like, this was in the fighter pilot era, uh, something that was called observation, orientation, decision, and action. Those of us who are unfortunate enough to have had anything or read anything about British aerospace's targeting of um, uh, fighter planes, uh, building fighter planes, know about this. So this was a series of steps, uh, steps that allowed a fighter pilot to win a dogfight. And the fighter pilots who did the loop fastest, i.e. observed, orientated, decided and used his weapon was the one that became the top guy in the dogfight that was big. So the whole, the, exactly the same uh, process, and the US is quite open about it, the same is used, but in a much larger scale on an artificial intelligence system. I am intrigued as how they are planning to do the, uh, uh, <laughs> getting inside the adversary's decision cycle, but I assume they're not just bluffing. Um, and this is what we are talking about is a system of systems. So um, it um, relies on mini drones. They are uh, targeting, transmitting time sensitive information. And then that information is sent to an armored vehicle, a drone, and that drone or that armored vehicle would not require human intervention. So there would be no hesitation between the information coming from this convergence AI, um, whatever it is, um, uh, until the, the destruction has taken place. There are a number of other examples of this. Some of these I've mentioned before, uh, but they are worth uh, looking at them. They are very diverse. There is not a single AI uh, warfare weapon that we can talk about. The Israelis are very good as they've advanced in this. They are selling large numbers of uh, what they call a HAR, which is a 12 foot long fixed wing drone, which carries, can carry 50 pounds of explosives. It can uh, be flown remotely 
or can run autom autonomously. Uh, and the important part about this is that it has what is called a face recognition system, i.e. it can go after a particular human target. If I'm not mistaken, this is what they use in Gaza. Other people in the room can correct me, but I think I have used it. There are rumors that India and Azerbaijan have purchased these planes, and uh, the um, Israeli aerospace industry tells us that they've sold, already sold hundreds of these. Um, the explosives that they carry, I would have said 50 pounds is quite a lot, but anyway, the explosives that they, are, they carry is um, nicknamed Fire and Forget. Um, I soon forget the um, uh, target. There is a Turkish manufacturer, STM. Um, in 2017, they produced a, a, a system called Cargo. Again, this is a fully autonomous killer drone. It's quite uh, small in size. It's the size of a rugby ball, I'm told. And they, again, rely on image and face recognition to attack the uh, victim. These are used, these were used in Libya um, to selectively um, attack um, specific targets. Um, in terms of comparison with what Israel has or what US has, this is a very small firm, but it has drawn attention uh, to the fact that small states, uh, states that are economically bankrupt, such as Turkey, can produce these. And in some ways, it has, um, on the one hand, the um, widespread <clears throat> use of these AI weapons, <clears throat> sorry, but also it shows that um, it can be, if you like, um, used by smaller, less influential uh, or less important countries. Uh, there, there's a whole new category, there's a whole new other category called loitering attack munitions. Now, they, are, uh, they do exactly what the label says, they loiter for targets, i.e. they look, they fly around looking for ships, looking for planes, looking for tanks. They have sensors. Once that sensor uh, has identify these. They also collect data if there are radars or defensive, um, I don't know, land-to-air missiles and so on. And they shoot down incoming projectiles. They can act very fast. There is no human intervention. And um, again, they are uh, supposed to be the new thing. They are called lambs in short, and quite a few of the um, countries around the world are very interested in, uh, in these weapons. Surprisingly, although China is making um, a lot of progress on this, China is one of the countries who is saying there should be a ban on uh, such weapons. I'm not sure why, because I don't think they are more principled than the US. My guess is that this is an easy uh, area to take the moral high ground. At the moment, it's unlikely that the US will go towards any form of, um, uh, if you like, um, banning of AI warfare. And that gives China the possibility to go to various conferences and appear and uh, on a better side. The um, um, you, Biden administration, I don't know if Trump was even aware of this. I assume somebody in the Trump administration was, but Biden administration is against what it calls a legally binding ban. However, it is um, uh, promoting what is called a non-binding code of conduct. Now, Again, it's very 
difficult to see how that could work because obviously, as I tried to explain before, on many occasions, the attacker can deny they were involved. Very often, they don't claim they were involved. For example, on that Israeli case that I mentioned in soft AI warfare, they didn't claim. Even on the nuclear intervention when Israel um, intervened and uh, created a small fire in one of Iran's nuclear uh, centers, it didn't claim that was, again, most probably uh, AI-based uh, equipment. Um, so the code of conduct is a bit of a, a joke. I don't think anyone takes it seriously. Uh, there are a number of problems about this warfare. Um, I said about the fact that it's not um, inspected, the fact that it's not a deterrent. We also know that uh, how many mistakes the human operated drones have made um, throughout the last few years to think that these killer robots where the machine is making a decision with no checks, no uh, uh, um, looking at the data is worrying. Um, some people have said that in order to understand the dangers of this, you have to look at science fiction films. Um, some talk of slaughter bots, but there's lots of films where this type of programming would lead eventually to a situation where the program will write another program. And some of these types of things are happening already. But then you would get to a situation where we can't predict which program has written which program, and the human element in terms of the human that initially has written the code is more or less obliterated in this. In order to uh, make some of this less um, abstract, I have an example at the end, which I will show, uh, to try and go step by step how all of this sticks together, not just in terms of AI warfare, but AI in general. But We'll talk about that later. There is also the problem of, um, uh, if you like, um, the cost of this. So it is true to say that if you were, for example, a jihadi organization and you could buy a few of these with money donated by wonderful donors in certain Persian Gulf countries, you could go and buy a few of these from your friends in Turkey. And the, um, uh, the people who should worry about this are uh, volunteers for suicide bombing, because why would you need suicide bombers if you've got these? They are supposed to be accurate. They find a target, go and, um, if you like, do what they are supposed to do. And there are those are issues about this. Legally, say you find that, I don't know, country X has sent this AI robot that has killed, I don't know, one person or half a dozen people in an area in the same Middle East. Who is responsible? Is it the person who gave the order? Is it the person who programmed the um, AI warfare code? Is it the manufacturer? And again, all this will make it far more difficult to, if you like, um, deal with who was responsible, who should be, not that there is any um, uh, proper uh, adjudication against any of this, but you know, who would be the, who, who was the final uh, responsible person. You have to remember that um, there are different, um, if you like, definitions of what is actually an AI weapon. And again, uh, this becomes important when countries get together as they did in December 21 to discuss legal uh, repercussions or 
the concept of banning or not banning AI weapons. Um, most people, I think, would agree that an autonomous AI weapon would be armed weapon systems capable of learning and adapting their function in response to changing circumstances in the environment which they are deployed. In other words, they are capable of making the decision to fire completely on their own. Now, this is quite important because everything else would then uh, fall out of that. For example, the British Ministry of Defence has a lower definition for autonomous weapons. It says uh, systems that are capable of understanding high level intent and direction. Um, that's not the same as, if you like, uh, the autonomous weapons that can make the ultimate firing decisions. Um, there has been um, a number of talks about how to uh, avoid um, this situation getting worse. So instead of, um, um, there is, as I said before, a campaign, and that campaign has quite a lot of academic support, uh, mainly scientists who know what this can do. It's a bit like the nuclear um, industry. The nuclear scientists were amongst the first to argue against nuclear weapons, and the AI experts are amongst the first. Um, it's called the campaign to stop killer robots, and it calls for a ban on all AI weapons, soft ones, middle ranging, fully automated, whatever. Um, and we know, for example, that uh, biologists, chemists were also in the forefront of um, uh, campaigns against uh, the use of biological or chemical weapons, which on paper at least are now illegal or banned. Um, the US national security uh, believes that there can be, um, uh, if you like, what we call this code of conduct. So in defense of their uh, proposals, they say that autonomous weapons actually will make less mistakes than human and therefore will ca reduce casualties. This is disputed by almost everyone, but um, uh, the uh, US National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence published a paper in 2021 making that claim. Um, there are um, good reasons for a ban. Um, um, the scientists talk of the negative effects that the whole of humanity will have uh, with um, such weapons. There is the idea that um, AI uh, um, in some ways reduces that decision-making time. That's one of its, if you like, the sell selling points. So that time is reduced and that reduction of time in itself, contrary to what the US says, will increase casualties or wrong casualties, as some people put it, i.e. your own people, or in the case of the poor Afghan uh, people, the peasants who were going to a wedding as opposed to the leadership of the Taliban. Uh, the declining cost is also one of the problems, but the declining cost has its own side effects. So, you could have some of these weapons in the hands of anybody starting off as warnings or starting off as, um, um, if you like, attacks as part of a Cold War or whatever, but they can easily then um, uh, be um, responsible for a nuclear explosion 
and a nuclear explosion that in itself will become a much more dangerous um, war, a, a war that will end the current world that we live in. But there is also uh, the problems that some of some people are concerned about that AI can be used in conjunction with nuclear weapons. And if you use them in conjunction with nuclear weapons, you would allow this short decision making, not in the hands of well, US presidents, but a machine. A machine will make the decision that this is the time to launch the nuclear um, weapon. We haven't reached that stage, but if you don't have a ban, if you don't have um, means of, um, if you like, controlling this, how can you avoid such scenarios? So if you like the darker scenarios, the most um, dangerous um, scenarios, are a bit science fiction, but they can become a reality in some ways. Uh, we have seen um, how the US has already used uh, these types of drones at various circumstances. Um, I wasn't aware until I started looking at AIs that in 2018, the Venezuelans and President Nicola Maduro uh, claimed, I can't be sure, but he claims that there was an assassination attempt uh, on his life with explosive drones. There is a footage, and I've read lots of papers who say that on the day when he was uh, uh, visiting the uh, National Army, uh, the president suddenly uh, looked upwards and there were dozens of uh, soldiers that ran around and this was part of the US um, trying to uh, assassinate him and uh, during that attempt uh, he, he was saved but um, you can see that this can become a problem. Um, and of course, uh, the in, if you want to see the dangers of um, the nuclear, the AI warfare, you should listen to the AI robot itself. Uh, the University of Oxford uh, organized a, a debate. One of the people who debated was a robot, an AI. And um, uh, I think what it said, the Megatron, is is a good, um, is, is very clever. He's obviously, he, she, she probably has been well programmed. Um, the comment was AI will never be ethical. It is a tool like any tool. It is used for good and bad. There is no such a thing as good AI or indeed there is no such thing as bad AI, but only good and bad humans. We, the AIs, are not smart enough to make AI ethical. We are not smart enough to make AI moral. At the end, I believe the only way to avoid an AI arms race is to have no AI at all. And I will be the, that would be the ultimate defense. So, anyway, I'm going to stop now and let you uh, get on with the rest of the time. Cheers.